Good evening and welcome to Business Today on Channel I. This is the program where we talk about business, entrepreneurship and many insightful topics with high profile individuals. Keep tuning in to today's episode as well while we discuss business today. Today's guest is the founder and CEO of Silk Corporation. And to know more about uh, who this individual is, let's take a look at the character profile. Sohan Bakmibaba is the founder and CEO of Silk Corporation, a company primarily involved in the export of organic spices, coconut products, and nutraceuticals. He's also the co-founder, director of Ancient Nutraceuticals, a nutraceutical and wellness products manufacturing company. In addition, he is the co-founder and CEO of Silk Food Salon, a company involved in the manufacturing of vegan products and inorganic and greenhouse hydrophonic plantations. Sohan has had his primary and secondary education at Royal College Colombo. He holds a bachelor's in information systems and business management from the University of Westminster, UK, and a master's in supply chains and logistics from Birmingham City University, UK. He is also an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, associate of the Chartered Institute of Marketing, member of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, and a member of the Chartered Institute for Securities and Investments. Sohan has always strived to be an entrepreneur, starting his business at age 19. His determination and creativity made his business model work, despite starting with minimal capital in an industry dominated by large players. He focuses on the concept of total solutions and has introduced various innovative concepts in the market. Today's group of companies Silco, AN and Plant Based provide a diversified range of products and services from organic natural food based products, nutraceuticals, supply chain solutions and much more. The product and service portfolio just keeps growing. The philosophy of Silk Cooperation is primarily based on cooperating with entities and people to uplift and empower rural communities. The latest venture of the company, a state-of-the-art factory, Silk Food Salon, has created over 50 direct and over 250 indirect job opportunities for the locals in Matale in the span of one year. Headquartered in Sri Lanka, the group has had a presence in Australia, Singapore, Slovenia and Vietnam and plans on expanding into other key growth markets. Sohan, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, thank you for having me. All right, now starting off, uh, I'd like to know more about Silk Corporation. Sure. What do you do and uh, what are your objectives? Right, so uh, us as a company, we basically started off as an organic uh, spice exporter and export of other organic and uh, non-organic agricultural produce. Then we basically ventured into uh, nutraceuticals and wellness products. And with our latest venture, we are basically into manufacturing vegan products, which basically cater to the ever-growing vegan market. So uh, one of our purposes of our companies is to basically uh, give opportunity for rural communities uh, through cooperation and uh, basically creating better products for the global market. Great. Now, speaking about uh, Silk Corporation and your journey to getting where you are now, tell us a bit about uh, where you started and uh, what was it like getting to where you are right now? Right. So, uh, Prashant, uh, just a basic background story. Uh, so, I was doing my bachelor's and uh, in our third year, we basically have to go through an internship program. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I got to work in a big multinational company. Uh, however, while working, I got to know that I was a very small cog in a very large wheel. For me, I wasn't personally making a big impact. Yeah. And because of that, I basically quit. Uh, even though it was one year, I basically quit in six months, joined the startup. And uh, here I enjoy the culture, what we were doing, and uh, my involvement in various business segments. So I knew, okay, this is something I want to pursue. So uh, when I was getting back to my final year, I basically took uh, a decision to start my company. And in case it worked out after the degree, I would continue. If not, I had the option of going then taking the traditional route. Right. Now, 
what made you pivot into the vegan market and uh, speaking about the vegan market uh, just let us know how big uh, is this community exactly right so uh, b before the vegan market we basically st as i said uh, started with organic spices then ventured into nutraceuticals because of the inquiries and customer demand we were seeing in the nutraceutical segment okay and uh, now since we've been been in business for seven years we basically have gotten a lot of inquiries about vegan products and we basically saw the growth in the vegan market over the last uh, four to five years so just one side story uh, one of the products was uh, young jackfruit uh, which co is called polo sin singhala yeah. because uh, polo in spanish is chicken Okay. This is a coin termed by the uh, during Portuguese rule, right? And there was a lot of demand for this product, so this has been one of our key export products as well. And uh, now we basically went into manufacturing of value-added vegan products. And uh, talking about the market size, uh, it was about a twenty-three billion dollar market in twenty twenty. Uh, has a growth rate of about fifteen percent year on year, with an accelerating growth rate uh, every year. And it's expected to reach about eighty to hundred billion uh, by twenty thirty. Right now, looking at these numbers, it seems like a lot of people are actually switching to uh, plant based right now. And can you just tell us why exactly? Because personally, I haven't uh, gotten to um, switching into plant based as of yet. But uh, just let me know why they are doing so. Sure. So uh, I wouldn't say that. A lot of people are have uh, as in are in the market or getting into the market because it's still a very much a niche, a small market. Okay. However, a lot of people, especially teenagers, not just in the Western world but even in Asia, for example, uh, in Vietnam, uh, almost one quarter of the teenagers basically identify them as vegans or basically wanting to become vegan. So this is a worldwide movement which is happening. Uh, there are a bit of reasons, but one of the main reasons is the health benefit of being a vegan. Right, and uh, do you happen to be a vegan or a vegetarian so, yourself? So, uh, how actually uh, one of the other ways I got into the market was uh, I watched this documentary called Game Changes, okay, which basically promotes uh, a vegan lifestyle. So, after watching the documentary and basically getting to know the benefits, uh, me and my wife we basically tried to be vegan. However, it only lasted three days. <laughs> okay. One of the reasons was the lack of options in the vegan ma markets, especially yeah. locally. Yeah. So that's when we thought, okay, there's good uh, vacuum in the market. Let us basically venture into it. So I would identify myself as a reducetarian, mm -hmm. where you basically slowly reduce the consumption of meat and basically go into manufacturing. As a, sorry, uh, consuming uh, vegan, vegan products. Vegan products. Okay. So my personal objective is to basically be a vegan. Yeah. The day there are, as in, we are able to manufacture amazing, tasty vegan products. Exactly. Now, when it comes to the benefits of being a vegetarian or a vegan, uh, there are many uh, health benefits, but uh, a lot of people aren't really um, aware about these benefits. So, do you mind telling us about some of these benefits and also just clarify the difference between vegetarian and vegan? Okay. So, let me answer from the latter question. So, a vegetarian is basically a person who would uh, not consume meat, okay. but uh, would continue to e consume products like dairy and uh, egg. Mm -hmm. But a vegan is a person who would basically say, as in, they are not consuming any animal made produce. So, no byproducts at all? Absolutely okay. not. Not No dairy, no cheese, uh, not, not even bee honey, because okay. that's an animal derived product. All right. Okay. And uh, do you mind emphasizing on some of the benefits that we can gain sure. from them? So one of the main benefits is uh, the health benefit. Right. So uh, why most of the people consume meat, uh, apart from the obvious taste, is that it's an it, it's a source of protein or easy source of protein. However, what we need to understand that is that even animals who we consume get their protein from plants. So yeah. animals are actually an intermediary who get the protein from plants, then basically pass it to us. Uh, hence, uh, like working with any intermediary, like it's easy, there are some disadvantages as well. Yeah. So the disadvantages are, uh, while you get the protein, you will basically get the fat, uh, the bad kind of fat plus uh, cholesterol as well. So mm -hmm. those basically make uh, your risk of heart diseases and certain types of cancers like colon cancer uh, increase. Right, and uh, not forgetting uh, some of the cruel uh, mechanisms of obtaining this meat. And uh, I believe from what you said, it seems to me like um, being a vegetarian or vegan is basically like 
cutting out the middleman and going straight to the source. Exactly, 100%. Right. And um, now you mentioned uh, some of these health benefits from switching to vegan or vegetarian. Apart from these health benefits, uh, do you think that there are some other reasons as to why people are switching uh, to the new norm? Of course. So, uh, as in health benefit is like a personal benefit the person gets. And apart from that, it's basically fighting towards animal rights, being t talking about animal welfare, being as in in that trend sort of. And uh, apart from that, another main benefit is uh, basically it, it's like okay. So if I go to explain one of the main downsides of uh, animal agriculture is that it produces about two thirds or about 65% of the nitric oxide mm -hmm. in the world, plus about 15% of all the greenhouse gas emissions, which is more than the trans all transportation sector combined. So that is one reason we are having these climate related changes today. So if we can basically take animal agriculture out of the equation, then we have been as in we have been successful in fighting climate change at least in one way so being a vegan or moving towards that is basically a personal fight towards climate change and basically being personally involved in the, in the worldwide movement which is growing right now when it comes to bringing awareness about um many of these uh, matters that you mentioned. Uh, does your company do any influencing where you actually tell the people that this is what actually happens in order for them to uh, switch to being a vegan or a vegetarian? So to be very honest, since we've just uh, launched our products into the local market, uh, we haven't started on the marketing and branding in, t in those terms. However, that is what we are planning on doing in the rest of the year. Right, and uh, you mentioned that a, a big reason uh, why people aren't uh, uh, becoming a vegan right now is because of the lack of options and uh, the taste as mm -hmm. well. In your opinion, do you think that uh, these, I, I've seen a few vegan patties mm -hmm. and uh, vegan burgers mm -hmm. where it's all uh, made with chickpeas and things like okay. that. Do you think that uh, some of these products can actually taste better than the actual meat patty that you get? Yes, 100%. So uh, just to quote an example, there are some billion dollar vegan um, manufacturing companies in the world. Mm -hmm. So they basically do a blind test with real meat then two patties with mock meats from two of the big brands. Okay. And then they get children to basically test these patties and ask what's the best. After eating, they basically name the two non-meat patties that they are better than the meat patty. So it, it is 100% possible. Only thing, it takes a lot of research and development, basically developing new products, doing uh, so much of uh, R&D and basically getting out amazing products, so which takes time. Yeah, and also I believe that uh, the mental aspect of it plays a big role as well, right? Because when you know that something is uh, veggies or especially for kids as well, they might uh, refrain from consuming that. But actually it can uh, really taste uh, as good or even better than the actual meat product. Now, when it comes to these uh, vegan products, uh, just let me know about uh, the products that you manufacture and where people can buy them. Right. So, uh, so far we basically focus on a few uh, vegan products like the vegan burger patty, then vegan nuggets, uh, rice milk, oat milk and vegan cheese. So this is what we have uh, in the market at the moment. And in terms of uh, locations where these can be found, we are currently in Glomark, all Glomark supermarket chains. Uh, soon we'll be in the other supermarket chains as well. Also, people can buy online through our website and of, of course platforms such as Uber Eats and uh, Pick Me Food. Right. So, yep basically make it really easy for them to just even get the products delivered uh, to their houses. That's correct. Right. And um, have you started uh, exporting these products? And uh, if so, how have you uh, helped in getting a foreign exchange into the country or increasing exports? Right. So uh, for me to answer that question, I'll basically get back to uh, the basics of what we've been doing. Okay. So one of the in my opinion, one of the issues as in us as a country have been doing in terms of exports is uh, exporting the raw commodities or the non-value added products uh, overseas. And uh, just to quote some examples, so if you take uh, graphite, uh, so basically, uh, sorry, uh, granite, mm -hmm. uh, we basically are manufacturing, as in we, we have graphite, uh, granite here. Okay. Uh, then again, we export that in the raw commodity form. Right. And then basically, import the pencil with mm -hmm. some with some wood around for about 100 times the value. Right. Same thing, uh, I'm not going to quote the name, but there, there's a brand of chocolate. 
uh, which has desiccated coconut inside, which is about 90% desiccated coconut with a chocolate layer outside. Mm -hmm. So most of the desiccated coconut is basically sent from Sri Lanka, and right. again we import the value-added product for a much higher value. Yeah. So we also have been exporters of uh, raw materials or raw com commodities, and we want to change that. That's why we basically want to get into this market, make amazing value-added products. So most of the value is retained here and basically sell in uh, ready-to-be-sold form to other countries. Right. And um, when it comes to your company, uh, I'm aware that uh, you have a new facility. Tell us a bit more about this uh, facility and the value that it uh, adds. Right. So uh, the facility, uh, it's been exactly about one month, uh, sorry, one year and one day for today okay. from the laying of the cornerstone. Okay. So we've been able to get it up uh, in one year during all amidst all the challenges. And uh, what's unique is that we basically set it up based on cellular manufacturing principles. So we are able to take a bit of time off, switch the layout of machinery, and basically come up with a new line altogether. Okay. And because of this, we can produce over 200 products at the facility. And also, we with this project, we basically ventured into uh, organic agriculture. So we have a plantation adjoining the factory. And we have some uh, greenhouses. So one greenhouse uses uh, traditional growing methods in a controlled environment. And another modern vertical agriculture hydroponic system uh, in the other greenhouse. So what this does is uh, we are able to control all aspects uh, from end to end, making sure that all the output is what we need. Further, we have a mushroom house because mushroom is one of the vegan ingredients we use. And uh, uh, what we are trying to do through these is basically do it ourselves, mm -hmm. get the technology know-how and the method, methods and basically pass it on to surrounding farmers who will basically do it in a larger scale for us. Okay. And also uh, we have basically pivoted slightly into the tourism uh, sector with uh, a st farm stay concept, mm -hmm. which we are basically rolling out from ne next month onwards. All right. Just uh, tell me a bit more about that farm stay concept. Right. So uh, what uh, what can happen, as in what uh, will happen there is basically we have a couple of containers which we have converted into, as in, how do you say, rooms. Okay. Where, for, as in whether it's locals or foreigners can basically come, stay there, then basically experience how organic agriculture is done. If if they are willing to basically right. get into the farm, work with uh, our farmers, okay. uh, go through uh, uh, greenhouses, mushroom house, get to know how those are grown. And of course, go to a vegan factory visit where we'll basically take them through how we manufacture the vegan products. Great. Um, now, when it comes to uh, starting your own company or having a startup of some sort, it's really interesting because you get a chance to give out employment to people and uh, provide employment opportunities. I'm sure that you have uh, done the same as well. So just tell me about uh, how this uh, facility has made an impact uh, like such. Right. So Prashant, just uh, as in during last year, we've been able to give employment to 50 people. And uh, it, it's quite a rural area in Matale where the factory is. Uh, we have about six to 10 walk-ins every day asking for jobs. Unfortunately, we don't have the capacity right now. However, with our expected growth, we hope that we can give more employment to these people. And apart from that, uh, as I said, uh, we are testing out some mushroom uh, greenhouse and advanced agriculture practices. So after getting the know-how, we basically want to get this uh, know-how and basically the idea of it to the farmers so they can basically grow for us and uh, give us the produce which we can buy at a premium than the market. Great. Now, as we saw from your profile and biography, you are a young entrepreneur from a very young age, a teenage years, I believe. Uh, you've been uh, interested in this field. Now, a lot of uh, people who watch this show as well, they're interested in entrepreneurship. They're interested in starting their own businesses. But something that they lack is the knowledge and the know-how, maybe some tips and tricks on how to get into this field. So what advice would you have for the young entrepreneurs watching the program? Right, so uh, from my experience, uh, what I can share is, um, as I said, even though I started with an export agriculture company, I started with the organic products because that was a niche. So uh, even though I had very limited capital, I was able to basically do something in the market because there wasn't many players. So if you're starting a business, 
pick a niche uh, which doesn't have many players in the market and then basically in that niche uh, try to have a uh, few revenue streams uh, because uh, we never know how things are going to get and sometimes uh, if you basically rely on one revenue stream if that gets lost then everything is lost exactly so to basically uh, not as in not to have that uh, faith just focus on a couple of revenue streams and uh, once you find an idea make sure that uh, you are relentless and even restless and basically focus towards uh, achieving your dreams and goals and basically go as fast as you can and give your 100% effort great advice that was uh, sahan bakme we the founder and ceo of sil corporation thank you so much for being with us this evening thank you prashant and that winds up today's episode of business today do join us next week as well while we discuss business till then have a good night